We're talking to Finn Thompson and Reeve Dixon from Finn Thompson, which is, it's nice to have your own name on the bottle, isn't it? How, how did it come? Well, uh, the reason my name is on the bottle, I suppose, is because, well, I'm, I'm the ninth generation of a family that's been making whiskey for best part of 300 years. Uh, the last custodian of, of the family business, which was called Peter Thompson's, uh, well, it was, it was a good enough uh, reason for him to put his name on the bottle. So I thought we could probably do the same. Uh, and since it's myself choosing all the casks, uh, I've got to take full responsibility for what goes into every single bottle. You have a large collection of casks in your family, and that's the source where you fill your whiskies from. And what I've noticed first is a very nice bottling of, uh, of, of the, the uh, packaging of the bottles. And you are the man responsible for that. So can you tell us a little bit about the idea behind the, the, the packaging? Of course. So the idea of the packaging was to be able to explain this wonderful story that's kind of a one-off in the Scottish lineage story of whiskey. So as something like this comes across your desk, you just get blown away with the, with the story of the family. So the first thing we did with the packaging is realizing that Finn Thompson was the ninth generation of one bloodline going all the way back to 1772, where James Thompson was doing aqua vitae up in Grantley. We wanted to represent all these stories within the packaging. So the packaging itself is nine sides, which is called a nonagon, and each side represents each family member that evolved the whiskey industry from illicit distilling, distilling, blending, all the way through to Finn, who has eight generations on his shoulders to do good bottlings. I, I know we could talk hours about this, but I found a very little detail. I'm very curious about why is there a car on this side? Uh, good explanation. So as Finn mentioned, Peter Thompson in um, 1920 was kind of started to do the blended uh, malts in Perth and one of his main ones called Ben Eagles. But he was, uh, he had a band called Peter Thompson's Grocery Band, and he used to go all over Scotland delivering whiskey and groceries. Well, th this one in particular is actually uh, something I found in the archives when I was uh, trying to discover more about the family story. And it was actually a postcard. And it was a postcard from one of the delivery drivers for my great great grandfather, who was on a journey out to the west coast of Scotland, which back then would have been, you know, quite a, hmm. a, a long journey. He sent a postcard back to his family of him standing proudly in front of the van, delivering whiskey to people. And it just caught my eye. I thought, what a special, cool moment that is. And because this is the, the delivery packaging, I thought we should put the delivery van on the outside of it to pay tribute to that little story. So this is a 33-year-old long one. It is, yeah. uh, Let's talk a little bit about the liquids. Absolutely. So, uh, oh. as you mentioned, we're, we're incredibly fortunate to have access to some amazing old casks. And the reason for that is that when my grandfather, Michael, sold uh, the family business in the 1980s, he very cleverly, uh, potentially luckily, but I like to think it was uh, clever planning, he kept hold of all the, the casks that should have gone into his blend, and instead we've get, let them get older and older and rarer uh, and hopefully tastier as well, uh, to the point where now we've got these incredible old casks that are ready for single cast bottlings. Mm -hmm. This one in particular is particularly special. Uh, Longhorn, Longhorn was one of my grandfather's favorite distilleries. The Ben Eagles blend was really based around three key whiskies. The grain was always North British. Mm -hmm. The richness of the blend came from McAllen. McAllen was the number one malt that went into it. But the number two malt was Longhorn. And my grandfather always says that Longhorn gave Ben Eagles its fruitiness. And even today, Longhorn is such a fruity whiskey that you know what you expect from it. And when it's in this type of cask in particular, with this kind of age, it turns into a very special malt. Like. And it's not without reason that we all four have classes in nothing. Absolutely. So I would say let's have a sip of this. And you could just try uh, the, the tasting notes. Uh, absolutely. Well, uh, the, the best thing about it, well, maybe not the best thing about it, but I remember when I first tried the sample, I probably spent as much time just nosing it as I did drinking it. It's got this incredible aroma of the 
the fruitiness of the base spirit. You get those apples and pears that are classic from a, a space side distillery like Longmorn. But the richness of the European oak that the cask is, is, is made of as well it comes through really nicely. There's there's a nice kind of like toffee caramel note. You're getting some dried fruit. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a really pleasant nosing experience. But taste-wise, all those flavors come through really well as well. You've got the combination of fruity distillery character with the richness of the cask. I think it's, you get a little bit of like bitter dark chocolate, that little bit of woodiness that just lets you know that this has been aged for over 30 years. Uh, and for me, it's just the perfect moment to bottle it. I think there's always a danger with old whiskies and particularly using European oak and ex sherry mm. casks that all of a sudden they can turn very quickly. And I think we caught this at exactly the right moment it tastes old, but it also tastes vibrant and youthful and young. Um, and it's just, yes, yeah, it's, it's an incredible drinking experience. That sounds strange. Thank, Thank you, you for your yeah. time and talking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Mm. Uh, it's, it's a long finish as well. And I think the best thing about it for me is that I know it's that richness, isn't it? It's almost like a, a, a long. I think it's the long lasting fruits. Yeah. And just uh, very good calories. That's uh, it's epic. I would, I would drink this all day. It's, it's, if I wanted to create the perfect aged whiskey, I think this would be it because it tastes like it's mm -hmm. old, but at the same time, it's got that vibrancy to it, which you sometimes don't get with old whiskey. Sometimes an old whiskey just tastes like wood and, and you know, balsamic like almost. So this, this has got that kind of youthfulness. But that's all about the. The Longmorn. Longmorn is such a good distillery for aging. Another nice little detail that you could bring. Did you bring the Ben and Eagles bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Finn was just explaining how each one of these went into the blend. So I don't know if you saw the Ben Eagles bottle. So this is the original one. Oh, I see. But what we've done is we brought to life all the original ceramics on the top of each of the bottles. And the ceramic tops are all handmade and each one is unique to represent all the different ceramics from the Ben Eagles era. I really like how much thought you put into this one. It's, it's amazing. Oh, it's a lot of fun and I, and I suppose that comes from it being a family business and the pressure of having eight generations before you who've all contributed in, in their own way. So it's important to pay tribute to each you know, generation and let people in on the secrets of, of you know, behind the brand, because uh, it's not something everyone will find out. It's something that we want people to slowly discover over time. It's not all over social media. It's not, um, you know, plastered everywhere, but you've got to come and speak to us and, and find out the little stories. And, and another nice thing to add is Finn has found himself in an unusual situation of having such a, an old history behind him. But the thing that he's got to be doing is looking to the future. So the brand's actual ethos and mantra is an eye on the past, vision for the future, uh, which is actually kind of based off the Greek god Janus, the two-headed god of yeah. forwards and future, which I guess is where you stand yourself with the brand, with the past, always laying down things for the future. I so that's what that whiskey is all about. Really? Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers.